Hello there, and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on advanced digital signal processing. This is a course offered by Professor Schuller at the Humanal University of Technology. I am Renato, and on this notebook we'll talk about non-uniform quantization compending. So we are going to um, take a look at the mu law and a law uh, compending, and we'll have some Python examples to demonstrate this type of quantizers. Let's get started. Previously, we've seen that the signal-to-noise ratio depends not only on the signal type, but also on the signal size. And compending is a scheme to make the signal-to-noise ratio less dependent on the signal time. Yeah? It means uh, compression and expanding. So the uniform quantization can be seen as a quantization value, which is constant on the absolute scale. On the other hand, non-uniform quantization using compending can be seen as having step sizes which stay con constant relative to the amplitude. So their step size grows with the amplitude. So how do we obtain this non-uniform quantization? So we first apply a non-linear function to the signal to boost the small values, and then we apply a an uniform quantizer. So on the decoding side, we first apply the dequantizer and then the inverse nonlinear function. So we reduce the small values again to restore their original size. So here's the scheme. So we have our signal. We apply a nonlinear function. Here it goes the uniform quantizer. We have this index. And in the, the, the decoder, we have this index. And then we apply the dequantization and we have the inverse of the nonlinear function and then we have our reconstructed signal. Yeah. So the range of the values and uh, the range of the index is compressed and smaller values become larger and large values don't grow as fast. So we use the following standard, standard functions uh, as mu law and a law to do the compending. Yeah. So here is the um, equation for the mu law compending and here are the equations for the A law compending. Yeah? So this compression function is applied before a uniform quantizer in the encoder, and in the encoder, after uniform reverse quantization, the inverse function is applied, turning back Y back into X. So um, observe that these equations assume that we first normalize our signal and keep its sign separate. So we, here's an example. So we are going to use the mu law um, compending, and um, mu is equal to 255, which is used in the standard. And then we have a signal x with a maximum amplitude of a. So we have the we obtain this equation here. So we're keeping the sign separate. So here we're just applying this when mu is equal to 255. And here, x, we are doing um, here some kind of normalization. So, in this, in this example of 8 bit mu law, we have the uh, quantization index. So, we are rounding. So, this is the mid thread quantizer, like we've seen before. So, here, a uh, y has the range of minus 1 to plus 1. So, it's normalized. And then we have the quantization step size for 8 bits is this, and then this index is then encoded as an 8-bit code word. So in the decoder, we compute the dequantized Y from the mid-thread dequantizer, including its sign from the index, and we compute the inverse compression function, so this is the expanding function, and we obtain the inverse through the following steps, so here we have the equation for the compression function, and we need the inverse of this. So we have here, we apply the exponential on both sides. So this was, this goes multiplying here, then we apply the exponential, and then we have that the inverse, it's given by this function here. So we get back x from the signal y. So observe that with this compending, the effective quantization step size remains 
approximately constant relative to the signal amplitude. Yeah? So large signal components have large effective step size and hence larger quantization error and small signals have smaller effective quantization steps and hence smaller quantization errors. In this way we get a more or less constant signal to noise ratio over a wide range of signal amplitudes. It is important to remember that this, this approach is identical to have non-uniform quantization step size, smaller, si smaller step size at small signal values and larger step size at larger signal values. The compression expanding of the signal makes the uniform step size look relatively smaller to the signal. It has more quantization steps to cover. So in this has the same effect as a smaller signal with smaller quantization steps. So here we have a Python example to de demonstrate the mu law um, compending. So here I'm importing libraries we're going to use. We're using NumPy and PyPod. Here I'm defining some signal process parameters. So we're going to use a sampling frequency of 32 kilohertz. And here we are defining the signal to be quantized. So it's the same signal that we used before when we explored the mid-thread and mid-riser uh, quantizer. So it's a, it's a signal. It's, the signal is a sine wave with amplitude equals to 1. So it goes from minus 1 to 1 and a frequency of 500 hertz. And here we are doing the quantization and the dequantization. So we have a number of bits is equals to four. So we calculate the step size. So here now it comes the compression. So we are applying this formula that we calculated here. So here we're doing this compression. So it's this formula here. So it's, we are doing this formula here which is defined here. Then we are doing the quantization here. So we can see there is the mid-thread and mid-rise. Here we are doing the dequantization. So also for mid-thread and mid-rise. And here we are doing the expansion. So we are doing the expansion for the mid-rise and the mid-thread. So, um, here we're just shaping everything to plot, so uh, in case we want to plot more than one period, we can just change this period of value that is defined here. So it's defined as I want to plot one period, but we can also plot more periods. And here uh, is the quantization error, which is the quantized minus the original signal. And here we are plotting our um, signal and the quantized signal. So we can see that in blue we have our original signal, it's a sine wave, and we see that for the step size, they are no longer uniform. So we have larger step size for larger values, and then we have smaller step size uh, uh, for small values. And here we have the quantization error. And like before, we can also listen. So this is the original signal. Here's the quantized, um, the mid-thread with the mu law um, compending. And here is the quantized mid-rise also with this compending. And like before, we can also see um, this in the frequency domain, so we have our original, but then when it's quantized, we have this quantization noise here, so we have a different uh, harmonics that are not present in the original signal, so due to quantization errors, we get this quantization noise. So what we have here then is an example, yeah, we are using this compression and then this expansion, so this defines the um, compending. Yeah, in this case, the signal, it goes from minus uh, one to one, so there is uh, no need for a normalization here. Yeah, but we can, for example, um, change here. Yeah, let's see, uh, see two periods instead of just one. And then we have 
our plot now we have two periods and we still can see the effects of uh, compounding so we have difference in known uniform quantization we have like smaller step sizes for small values and larger step size for larger values finally what we uh, will do now is a real-time mu law quantization a Python example so it's the same like we did before with um, mid thread and mid riser but now we are including here a control for the mu law so when we press this button here then there will be the um, compression and expansion so here now another difference is here that we are normalizing so pi audio is using six, 16 bit audio so we are normalizing so the values go uh, from minus 1 to 1 instead of from minus 2 to the power of 15 to, the power to 2 to the power of 15 here when uh, the mu law is on so if we press this uh, checkbox here if we select this checkbox then the there will be this uh, compression here then we have a mid thread or the mid rise so we can also select here from this box mid thread or mid rise then we will have the expansion so after the dequantization we have the expansion and then we need to um, bring back our signal that is now from minus 1 to 1 bring back to 16 bits so it goes from minus 2 to the power of 15 to 2 to the power of 15 so let's um, let's do uh, this test. Let's like before we could see that when we used the mid thread with low bit low bit depth, so a low low bit accuracy, like for example four, we've seen that the mid thread was swallowing the uh, small uh, values. But then we will see that with this compounding, we will see what happens. So let's go for this example. Allo son. Alô som. Alô som. Alô som. Ei, teste. Ei, teste. Um, dois. Um, dois. Alô som. Alô som. Teste. teste. Ei, ei, teste. Teste. Ei, ei. Alô, alô. So we see uh, in action, yeah, that there is this um, compression and uh, expansion, so this compounding, and we get a different results if we use uh, just the mid thread or the mid rise quantizers, but introducing this um, this uh, compounding, we achieve a different result.